Hi everybody and welcome to uh, my little live feed auction preview. As you know, we've been busy working away trying to get as much cool stuff as possible ready for the December 5th antique sale and I'm proud to say the sale is live for bidding right now and uh, it ends December 5th. So you can get in there and place those pre-bids, but we are gonna do a little bit of an auction preview today. I'm gonna walk around, show you some of the cool stuff that's gonna be going through the sale. Plus, I just added another 100 lots to the auction, which will be added in uh, either today or tomorrow. So you should see all that stuff coming up very soon. So without further ado, let me spin this camera around and quit looking at this mug, and maybe we'll look at some other mugs that are up for sale. Here we go. Okay, so about 90% of the stuff in this sale is mine. There are a few things uh, like the little skeleton here and stuff. That's not mine. But if you like it, we'll bid on it. Somebody is going to get something cool. We put through a couple pinball machines. So we've got the road race sitting on this side. Uh, we have the poker face on the other side here. My friend Jim had serviced these prior to us bringing them in. So they're working good. This was a, a fun little piece that lots of you were asking about buying. And what's inside? That's what's inside. It's a cute little English picnic set. So that is up for grabs. As we continue working our way through here, we see all sorts of fun stuff. We got this 1950s, uh, looks like a little Chris Craft uh, kitty boat ride. It's a dime, a 10 cent, uh, would have been in front of a drugstore. So if you're local maybe, or if you don't mind having something like that uh, big shipped, you can do that. Um, this beautiful watercolor in this uh, ornate gold frame. It's signed N. Cook. It's dated 1900. And I kid you not, it's like four feet tall. It's absolutely massive. But what a nice little scene. It looks like uh, two youngsters in love. We, uh, these are the items that I just brought in today. So we just got them in, we lauded them. So um, I had somebody bring in a professional um, reporter's camera kit. So it's a JVC 1980s uh, professional news camera with the Miller sticks and tripod. We brought down the sword and the stone uh, poster and the Lady and the Tramp poster, uh, two Navajo blankets, uh, an 1800 Scottish crock from a, a wine jug. There's a, uh, a crate mixer. We have, if you like pottery, this is an actual Moorcroft vase. So that's a 1930s Moorcroft. If you know, Moorcroft is um, quite a high-end piece. So that is a, a special piece. I'm going to lay it down delicately there. Um, an antique Bosch and Law microscope, all sorts of license plates, a little assortment of slot cars. This is a World War II uh, pilot's wristwatch. This is a um, Burke's Eterna. Somebody's put a new stem on there, so it would probably stand to have a better stem, but it's working away. And uh, the black dial, um, the Arabic numerals, uh, these were used by the uh, Canadian military for our pilots. And of course, I brought in a couple of the Confederate notes. Uh, we got the uh, $10. Let's see if I can get this out here. $10 and $5 Confederate notes are going to be going up for auction right away. And these are dated 1864 and they are signed. There's a whole bunch more uh, sports cards, a little solid gold ladies watch, nine karat gold solid watch, a JFK presidential pin. Wonder if he'll win. Um, all sorts of baseball cards. Uh, Walkmans, don't ask why. I brought down some Walkmans, some records some uh, gramophone. These are um, Ambarola reels for uh, Edison uh, Graffinola. This is a, uh, I think I mentioned this before, it's a chicken hatcher <laughs> or side table. What do you want to do with it? Um, some nice beaded indigenous moccasins. And we start getting into some uh, indigenous sort of artwork like the soapstones. Uh, we've got typewriters. This is a cool piece. This is a Mills Novelty um, Liberty Bell one arm Bandit slot machine. Now, it's going to need to be taken out and cleaned real good. It's frozen up. I got this out of a barn. And um, it, uh, it is a cool piece, so it would have dispensed mints out of one side. And then your, so your little novelty would have come out the bottom and hopefully your money if you're lucky enough. But that's a nice, nice piece. Um, <laughs> sewing machine from Mary's house. Some GoBots in the boxes. Uh, if there's anything you want me to stop and have a better look at, I will. There is a uh, whole box full of uh, English train cars and buildings. I think these are so made in Great Britain. I think it might be tricks. Anyway, it's a nice little set. Some of them are metal. A wooden plow. But um, there is a whole pile of stuff. Oh, yeah, these jackets are neat, too. Boltaco racing jacket, Chevrolet dealer smocks from the 1940s. Um, 
This is a uh, Canadian motorcycle jacket, the Shell Formula One race team jacket. I'm gonna keep walking my way through here. Somebody said, ooh, look at the trains. Well, there's a little end scale set over here, which we have out. There's a box of HO scale that we brought in. That's all HO scale. That's, and that's the tiny stuff. Some rotary phones and some fun colors. The radio, oh yeah. And of course, you know, for good measure, cause why not have a sitar? And uh, it needs the strings put on, but it comes with a brand new set of strings. And that's uh, Bhargava and Company in India. Neat looking piece. George Harrison would be proud if you bought that. Um, nice typewriters. We've got the whole set of the Goonies, mouth and data, chunk, all the guys there, an old taxi meter. So this is uh, what you'd put you, <laughs> if you had a cab, you'd uh, have that running and it would mechanically tell you how much money you owed the guy. But if you're going to build an old style taxi, like for a car, that's the piece you need to finish it up. Um, the, a lot of people are asking about this. That is a butcher's cover. It's an original album inside, but I believe uh, this was in my dad's collection. I think he told me it was like a 1970s bootleg. So it's not the original original, but it is an older butcher cover. Um, an old Northwest Ter Territory sample plate. Some of Mary's uh, test ceramics. And we'll get into some of the really, what I think is some of the cool stuff. Nice little boxed writing set that even has the, uh, the pour for the wax seals and the, uh, the pens and the whole thing. Like that's a really nice little set. Little wind up car with electric headlights. Ward Air stewardess doll. Some of you in Alberta might remember Ward Air. They were a really nice place. Nice uh, airline when you had, uh, when you went on a Ward airplane, they would have like the best meals. It was like first class under the way it was back in the old days. Lots of vintage cameras going up. Um, guitars. Here's a little assortment of toys. So Dinky Toys, Harley Davidson. That's quite an old one. That cast iron fire truck, that's, that is an actual like turn of the century. They replicate a lot of this stuff, but that is a real old timer, that one. Um, so that's a pretty neat piece. Uh, little cap guns, the ship in the bottle, because why not? <laughs> this little Haida Eagle and movie graphs. Let's see. I'm, oh, this is a really cool piece. And for those of you that didn't see this before, this is a salesman sample boiler. It's, there's the size of my hand. It's a miniature that they would have carried around to try and uh, show their clients. And it probably would work like a real boiler. This thing, if you saw this like Bear Jackson or something, that would be like a thousand dollar piece. I think it's only like 25 bucks online right now. This is a very, very good piece and it's way undervalued at the auction right now. Um, there's a Boer War uh, pith helmet right there. You know, late 1800s, some top hats. Um, this is a military, um, they would use this by the, uh, the guns. It's called a fire bucket. They, they would have likely carried uh, uh, water to help uh, expel any sort of flamage coming out of the end of a cannon. Cool piece though with the English crest on it. And let's see, I'm gonna scroll back around this way. Some of Mary's pottery, of course, you guys know Mary's work. This is one that I had in my own house. Some of these came from my own collection. The, the face, this lovely Art Nouveau, and for whatever reason, art they spelled Art Nouveau a little differently. It should be N-O-U, they spelled N-E-A-U. Anyway, you get the idea. It's an Art Nouveau style vase. There's another one of Mary's, her recipe book with all her, I know there's a lot of interest in this, so I'm gonna leaf through it really quickly. So when we get into this, it has um, lots of basically just like recipes on how, what the mix and what the blends are for making, uh, you know, copper oxide, cobalt, how to make her different uh, glazes. And it looks like she kept adding to it over the years. Maybe when she learned something when she was away, she would get some other glaze recipe. She put a check, mark, check mark next to the one she liked, I guess. Look, there's even a price list of, uh, <laughs> looked like she went to a clearance sale, but on the back she wrote uh, glaze recipes. So she kept that all together in this book. So it's a nice little scrapbook um, that Mary put together. And hopefully somebody who's really into pottery is going to end up with that. Um, as well as her sketch pad full of her drawings and plans. This sketchbook is probably the best, one of the better deals in terms of Mary's uh, work because it's all, uh, it's full right up basically. Nice indigenous um, uh, beaded jacket. 
And the little hearts on there, sometimes I was told that could mean uh, it was a medicine man's jacket. But lovely beadwork on that with the fringes. Beautiful, beautiful piece. Uh, some antique firearms, Masonic swords. A lot of, um, a lot of these sort of um, Masonic temples and stuff formed after the Civil War. So this would be right around the time of the Civil War. Um, it has the Templar sort of cross on it with the knight. Uh, it could be Knights of the Southern Cross. It could be Templar itself. I don't know. There's so many different orders back then um, that it's hard to say exactly which one. Somebody could do the research on it. Lots of bayonets. Of course, some higher-end cameras in the case, which is a little tough to see in there. There's an ammonite fossil. Oh, a whole bunch of Batman cards. Remember those? Kapow! <laughs> Oh, this is a fun sale. There's, there's a lot of neat stuff, you know. Every time I look around, there's something cool. Um, this Cree-made chair was um, made in the Onion Lake area, Cree Nation, and um, you can see they kind of, they used it for uh, photography purposes, but um, this was one that was gifted to the lady that was a telegraph operator at Onion Lake around, you know, 1899, 1900 or so. Uh, made of fallen bison horn. You can see how they kind of, you know, put, put little holes there so everything rests so nicely. And um, it's the original fabric. Like, this is something that you'd probably see in a museum, not necessarily at an auction sale. Uh, and when we come down to the underside, see that? It's made from an 1800s um, uh, corn syrup crate. So fur trade history right there. Really neat piece. Square nails, for the most part, holding it together, other than when they've had to put some wires and things on it to stabilize it, but we left it as is. Um, oh, this was kind of neat too. This is a little midget printing press. I don't know if I showed this before or not, but you, you turn this and you hit, it's a little printing press and inside this little tray here, uh, inside here are all the little blocks for your, um, you know, your numbers, your letters. See, it says lot size number four. Uh, so you can make your own tiny little labels. It's like a, a tiny little printing press. It's really, really cool. Uh, the John A. McDonald letter, that's this guy right here. That is an authentic letter that was written by our first prime minister. And it's dated 1848, June 1848. And it's basically a legal matter, but it's signed at the bottom, uh, John McDonald, Esquire. And it's on uh, sort of like a vellum hallmarked paper. That is a very historic piece. Um, He's uh, become kind of a controversial figure in our history, but it is still a piece of history and it's still interesting nonetheless. Uh, the nice little Omega Seamaster, a lot of people were asking about that, it's a nice piece. This is a lady's wristwatch too, which I think might be diamond and little emeralds in there. And oh, those are these uh, <laughs> Porsche sunglasses. They're very uh, ballin'. <laughs> There's a gold uh, Masonic pin. And this is a 1700s, as we know now, a 1700s Imari plate, hand-painted. So I decided to bring one of these down to see how it does at auction. We'll, we'll see how that goes. And let's see, a tomahawk for good measure with carved handle. It's an authentic indigenous piece. Just tons and tons of stuff. I feel like there's so much stuff. I feel like I, I couldn't possibly show it all. Um... You'll have to go online and check it out to actually see what all the stuff is that we have here. But, you know, everything from action figures to, you know, Buffalo Head. I brought this little digital derby game down. You saw me, maybe you saw me playing that on my Facebook page, but I was playing that a little bit. It does work. Um, nice little portable radios. This was a fun piece. It's an antique elephant marionette. I'll see if I can pull that out there. Oh, it's trapped by this lot of uh, African trade beads. These would be fun to... Uh, make some jewelry with, if anybody out there makes jewelry. These are all trade beads, antique ones. Beautiful, beautiful. There's a whole container full of those. But the little elephant I thought was cute, and I just picked this up not that long ago too. Isn't that a fun little guy? You'd have to reattach the string to the front, but you can make him walk around and do stuff. I thought that just, even as a piece of decor, is so nicely done. Things like that, it's kind of a heartbreak to put through auction because I like that stuff myself and it looks so good at the store. Um, there were a couple pieces. <laughs> this is fun. If I didn't show you this before, I found this in the basement of a house. This is uh, one of the biggest hoaxes known. Um, they claimed that this was, this is the Cardiff Giant, 
And they made this giant stone man and they buried him and they claimed it was a petrified fossil fossilized remain seven and a half feet tall. Um, which is, you know, almost now like the entry point to get into the NBA. But at that time when people were like, you know, five feet tall, that would have been a big guy. So they called him the Cardiff giant and they would sell, um, these brochures and they, and you'd pay. And so this is somebody who paid in Colorado in 1877 to go see the Cardiff giant. Um, they got bamboozled, but it's a piece of American history. It's, it's known as one of the America's biggest hoaxes. Uh, and so that's a piece of, um, you know, early history. Kind of a fun thing. Uh, Elvis book. Oh, this is a very early, um, this is the 1920 Spalding rule book for baseball. Look at that guy on there. Number step Rule number one, grow a bushy mustache to help your balance. Rule number two, mm, just have lots of swagger. Look at that guy. Anyway, really cool thing. Uh, and the interesting part is it's uh, devoted to the interests of baseball in Canada. So I wonder what the differences were back then. Anyway, really nice piece of early, early baseball history. Um, nice little illustrated book. Oh, th here, this is what I wanted to show you. <laughs> Next to the world's biggest dictionary. Look at that thing. Every word. You want a no word? It's in there. Except it's not the... Now you could have an urban dictionary that's just as thick. This was a really cool piece. So this is um, Fantasia um, for the organ. And uh, it's done by Johann Bach. Now this dates to 1789. I have it in plastic right now because I wanted to keep it in good shape. But this is an original uh, music composition. Uh, it's music notes, but it's from 1789. That was just a, just a hair after he actually died. This is just barely posthumous. So this would have been like contemporary music, like just, you know, a little short time after Bach actually died. So 1700s music of Bach Really neat piece, and I think it's really undervalued online right now, too. I think it's, you know, only $20, $30. That is a nice historic piece of uh, music history. Uh, let's see. I'm walking my way. This is that Catalan radio. Nice swirly cat. Catalan is very popular for uh, material. for If you're collecting radios, Catalan is what you want to get. That's the good stuff right there. Of course, more baseball cards. This was the Mickey Mantle year, 52 tops. This is a uh, captain's telescope, and it's a presentation piece. It would have had leather probably on it at one point, but if you look there, it actually is inscribed from Glasgow. J.W. Blakeney, Blakeney and Company, Hall, Glasgow. So that'd be 1800s. These are interesting. There's a whole little set of these. These would be uh, 1700s American. These are Dutch, like when New York was New Amsterdam kind of tiles. These would go around a fireplace. And when I was at the Metropolitan Museum of Art, they had a fireplace that was done in these same tiles. So this is very, very early American settler, um, 1700s Dutch American uh, tiles. And they tell a little story. It's the same characters. It would go all the way around. There might have been a few more tiles at one point, but either way, this is a nice little lot of them. I think there's five there total. Really, really neat piece. And, of course, lots of toys for good measure and fun stuff and, you know, vintage robots and old model kits from the 40s and 50s. So if there's, there's a little bit of something here for everybody. It's hard to peg down what the, the coolest thing is. You know, a little stife giraffe for those that collect stuffed animals. Industrial iron. This isn't your normal sad iron. That's like out of a, you know, like a factory or something. Somebody who was doing, using industrial work would have had that. Uh, all right. So a ton of cool stuff. If you haven't checked out the auction, go to kauctions.ca. The auction is live right now. You could be on there bidding right now. <laughs> and there's all kinds of neat things at the sale. So uh, go and check it out. These guys will ship anywhere and they ship insured as well. Uh, my understanding is they get a discount on the shipping rates. They've got to deal with one of the carriers. So um, why not? Have some fun. Hopefully you get some cool treasures. This sale that I've, I've been talking about ends on December 5th, which is my birthday. So on my birthday, I'll be watching some of this stuff end and uh, hoping that it ends up uh, being a good sale. But to uh, all of you watching home, thanks so much for tuning in. Go check out the auction and hope you guys end up with some cool treasures. Bye for now, guys. Bye, guys.